and those chances are improved as Drew sets off nearly 130 miles east to South Yorkshire in search of items with impeccable provenance at a stately home with centuries of history. Thomas Crapper was born around here. No. Yeah. And without Thomas Crapper, you wouldn't have an alternative word to call your stock. <laughs> <laughs> you kid. <laughs> Lying just north of Doncaster is Hooton Pagnell Hall. Steeped in history, the earliest part of the present house dates from the 13th century, but has been subject to many additions and alterations over the years. The house was used as a military hospital during the First World War, and Drew knows relics from that era sell well. Gorgeous, isn't it? And it's big. I mean, look at look. It just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? I know what's it's... going in in your head. What? The restoration there, the workshop there, <laughs> and I just fill every yeah. other shed with cars. Current owner Mark Ward Norbury is turning the hall into a wedding venue, and wanting to clear out some of the old furniture has called in Drew. Well, I think it's going to be really exciting because uh, hopefully he'll be pulling out some interesting things for us to have a look at and shed some light on. There's often history attached, but at the same time, we recognise that you do have to move things on because, you know, it's sitting there and it's um, getting dusty and cobwebby and not being appreciated by anybody. So actually to give something a new lease of life I think is a, is a very positive thing, rather than just leaving it sitting there, gathering dust for another 100 years. Mark, hello. Very well. Good to meet you. How are you? Very nice to meet you. Hi. Tea. Tea, good yeah. to meet you too. Hey, you. Quite a pad. <laughs> <laughs> this is lovely. Should, can we have a look inside to get yeah, out of the rain? Absolutely. Yeah? Come on through. Well, this is, certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Wow. It's a weird mix of styles, isn't it? Very it works, so. but it's uh, it's uh, it's all over the place. Where does it split then? Is it is it a, a yeah. definite? Is that the oldest bit there? Yes, that's, that's the oldest and then, part. And then, yeah, carry on having a look around. Please do. You just want, you just want to see the Georgian bit, don't you? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Never been in this area of the country in my life. Stunning. Oh, this is a nice room. It's like a path of architectural styles. You can go right. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of sort of. Romanesque, you've got then a little bit of Gothic, and then you've got, you know, Georgian, you've got Victorian, industrial building sort of architecture here as well from the 18th and 19th century. It's a real mix, but it's like a book. You can read the house. Look at that for a wedge of oak. Nothing downstairs is for sale, but luckily for Drew, Mark has many more treasures tucked away upstairs. Ooh, look at this. Oh, hello. Love bears. the bears, yeah, black forest bears. Oh, you've got loads of them. Oh, that's a belter. I've never seen one stood on his hands before. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Oh. I think Drew likes your house. <laughs> that's gorgeous. Beautiful thing. Very early 19th century. Fabulous thing. Not for sale. No, no, we need something to keep all the family photographs in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a shame I can't buy that. I don't blame him. You know, why would you want to move that from there? It's perfect. I think it's going to sit there for another 100 years. So where are we off to next, then? So we're going to go through here to the, uh, to the tower room. OK. Oh, yes. This has just got... Oh. Ooh. I think we might be here some time, T. So this is all stuff to go, potentially? Yes, really? absolutely. You this want to get rid all, of this stuff? This is all fair game. Prayer beads, is it? Rosary, yeah. Lovely, isn't it? Oh, beautiful. I've been into hundreds of rooms like this, you know, that have been untouched and they're full of stuff. That one's really exciting. That was just like, oh, my word, look at that, look at that, look at that. See, these old wall hangings and rugs, I mean, they can just... You can find some little gems amongst these sometimes. There was such a breadth of, of mix of styles and countries that this stuff's from. It's 
It's a mask. Witch doctor's mask. Look at the age in that. Look at that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Do you know where that's from? I don't. Oh, yes. um, I guess it's Africa, but I may be completely wrong. Yeah, I thought it's more Indian. Is it? Yeah, I think so, with the cobras on it. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll just go and have a look in there. Yeah, do. I think that was the flag that they flew when it was a military hospital. This was the thing I was going to have a look at. Do you want yeah. to get rid of that or do you want to keep it? No, happy for it to have a new home. So that's the First World War yeah. hospital flag. Yeah. I thought it was a George Cross flag, and so we open it up and it's actually a Red Cross flag. So that must have come, so we can date that. That's during the First World War. And it's tatty and worn and threadbare and of large size. So it's got, a, it's a great decorator piece with a lovely history. This hand-stitched Hessian flag dates from the First World War of 1914 to 1918. The Red Cross was adopted at the first Geneva Convention in 1864 as a neutral protective sign for those helping the victims of conflict. A Red Cross on a white background being the exact reverse of the Swiss flag. This example could be worth around £250. Would a hundred quid buy it? Because I can't really go any more than that. Okay. Can't get a bit more out of it. One twenty. That'd be it. So we'll be done. Yeah. It's all yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Marvelous. Okay. Lovely. Right. Red oh, Cross flag that needs treatment. Yeah. <laughs> it's so uh, it's quite ironic. <laughs> <laughs> For moths, yeah, yeah. just in case. Items from the estate's past have been gathering up here for decades, so there's plenty for Drew to sift through. Look at those, they're just a great bit of fun, aren't they? Having a bit of state, but aren't they fun? I think I can remember sitting on those as a, as really? a, as a, as a young child. Is that Peter Rabbit? It is. For kids, yeah, for kids' bedroom. God, they're great. Love it. They're so cute. They're so cute. They're so saleable. So, so saleable. They're only three bits of plywood. There's multiple interests in this. There's going to be people who collect Peter Rabbit stuff. There's going to be interior decorators for the colour, or somebody just wants them for their children. You know, they're cute little things. This pair of 1950s plywood children's chairs were used by Mark as a child and used to sit in the nursery. Shaped using a handsaw and constructed with traditional butt hinges, they have a hand-painted finish. While only around 60 years old, the connection to historic children's writer Beatrix Potter increases their value, meaning they could be worth around £350. Well, I really like the Peter Rabbit chairs. They need a ton of work. They've got bits all over the place, but they could be restored. What I'm wondering, for these in their current state, £150? Can we get to 200? Um. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is at Hooton Pagnell Hall in Yorkshire, a stately home dating back to the 13th century. He's rifling through a room crammed with items from the estate's past aiming to find historical items to add to his website. There's Asian, there's Japanese, there's Chinese, there's all sorts of stuff in this one little tiny room. And it's all real odd, bod things. Nothing's normal, it's a real strange thing. Drew's bidding on a pair of 1950s painted Beatrix Potter children's chairs. Well, I really like the Peter Rabbit chairs, they need a ton of work. They've got bits all over the place, but they could be restored. What I'm wondering, for these, in their current state, 150? Hmm. Can we get to 200? Is this two of them? Um, I think once they're restored, I'll get 350. OK. I think that's where I'm probably going to be at with those. 
can we do 180? OK. Yeah? Yeah. I have a deal on that. I very, very rarely buy children's size furniture. It, it, it doesn't really have a mass market for it. But these chairs are an exception to the rule. Because of the hand painting, because of the subject matter, and because there's a pair, it makes them very saleable. The Friendly yeah. Society of Glastonbury. Oh, wow. Wow. <coughs> 1911. Wardle Oldman. Frickley Hall, Doncaster. Yeah. I don't know how that got here. That's fab. Boring thing, really, isn't it? It's a stick with a brass and oak acorn on the end. But the label changes it. The label puts it at a place in time. It puts it, all of its history together. And it's really nice, and everybody knows Glastonbury as well. Do you want to sell it? I didn't even know it was there, so yes. Oh, well, it's excellent. It'd be good for it to yeah. maybe find its way back to Glastonbury. This oak and brass staff dates from 1911. Friendly societies are an association of people joined by a common financial or social purpose. Members used to carry poles like this in parades around their West England villages. The staves would carry emblems, the acorn on this example indicating longevity. With the label adding to its provenance, it could be worth around £225. £75? Yes, go on. Yep. Yeah. Oh, this... Love it. Today was really good fun. It was like going to a little miniature antique fair or all of my own, where I was able to you know, wander around and buying nice little bits. Um, we got nice provence with, with nearly all of the pieces we got today. Great mix. Didn't spend a great deal of money, but we did buy profit on every single thing and fun no big ticket items today um, this is all good walkout stock you know you can walk away with something with real history there are a number of items where he was looking at things and i thought he was looking at something completely different and suddenly his eye got drawn in a in a in a, in a completely different something completely unexpected Sorted, T. Yeah, all in. Nice, easy one for you. Yeah. Nothing too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, thank you. Uh, pleasure. pleasure. Really good, good stuff. With the van loaded, the boys set off back to Wales. What did we spend? Under a grand. Yeah. And bought a load of bits. I love the little Peter Rabbit chairs. <laughs> Do you? You think they're sinister, don't you? There's something just I can't a little see bit it. strange about them. You think so? They might, might mean they, they sell a lot quicker. Look at these. T thinks they look sinister. It's Peter Rabbit. They do. They don't. Well, don't you do. think they're great? 180 for the pair. Can you just make up some more pegs like this, Gav? Give them a polish. Job done. Bosch, cast iron, solid gold, profit. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Cool, huh? They've lasted well, haven't they? No, look at these two, completely dumbfounded. <laughs> no? Well, you like them, there's not a lot of work to do. Staff of the Friendly Society of Glastonbury, bought in Wells in 1911. Frickley Hall, Frickley Don Hall Doncaster. So, whatever you do, this is worth naff all. Really, that. without that, no pressure. The Glastonbury staff, Drew has only bought because of the label. Um, otherwise, it's just a stick with a very funny acorn sitting on the top, and it really hasn't got much value. That tag says it all, and whoever buys it will be buying it because of the swing ticket. First aid, Red Cross. Red Cross. Yeah. Dr Bernardo's. The house, during and after the First World War, was a military hospital mm. for the injured soldiers. Mm. So this would have been flying from the house. So it's got a fabulous history. We know exactly where it was for. All where the it's states, from. everything. It's just lovely. Great thing, isn't it? It's absolutely a wonderful piece. The flag is actually an epitome 
of what Drew loves about antiques. Most people might look at it and go, oh, that's a load of tat. But it's not. It's time-worn. It's got history. It's perfect. Nice bit of social history. Yeah, that was it from them. Yeah. Medium wash. <laughs> Medium wash. <laughs> Don't put it in the wash, whatever you do, there won't be anything left of it. I keep this in the office. Yeah, it's nice. Just, yeah. just, a, 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 just a light job on that. With the van unloaded, Gav gets straight to work on the chairs. Having been used by children and then discarded in an attic room, they fall into some disrepair, and Gav will need to work on making them usable again. I need to make six of these. As you can see, they're missing. They're a bit, a bit creepy, these are a bit weird. Looks kind of sinister, the rabbit, like he's done something wrong. Freaky. Next, he tries to match the paint to the original, using a mix he's created in the workshop. Luckily enough, it's not far away. Once it's dry, we'll just dirty it up a bit with a bit of wax, and it should match perfectly. That's it. Done. They're finished and ready to be enjoyed for another 60 years. Had a tough life outdoors. Rebecca wants to find out more about the history of Hooton Pagnell Hall as a military hospital when it was run by Sarah Ward Oldham, ancestor of the current owner, Mark. The more background an item has, the more desirable it could be. I've been looking to see if I can find a photograph of this flag actually flying um, outside Hooton Pagnell Hall. I can't, but I have found out that it seems this was quite a sort of normal thing for stately homes and halls to do. But uh, Sarah took it even one step further when the soldiers were sort of nursed back to health and then sent back out to war, she sent them postcards, kept in touch with them, gave them gifts. And then finally, when the war ended, she was awarded an MBE and a Royal Red Cross. What a lovely, lovely lady. All in recognition of her service at Hooton Pagnell Hall. It's items like these that tell a story, that tell a story about history that we must never forget.
no, we need something to keep all the family photographs in. <laughs> uh, it's a shame I can't buy that. I don't blame him. You know, why would you want to move that from there? It's perfect. I think it's going to sit there for another 100 years. So where are we off to next, then? So we're going to go through here to the, uh, to the tower room. OK. Oh, yes. This has just got... Oh. Ooh. I think we might be here some time, T. So this is all stuff to go, potentially? Yes, really? absolutely. Do you want to get rid all... of this stuff? This is all fair game. Prayer beads, is it? Rosary, yeah. Lovely, isn't it? Oh, beautiful. I've been into hundreds of rooms like this, you know, that have been untouched and they're full of stuff. That one's really exciting. That was just like, oh, my word, look at that, look at that, look at that. See, these old wall hangings and rugs, I mean, they can just... You can find some little gems amongst these sometimes. There was such a breadth and a mix of styles and countries that this does. It's a mask. So, yeah, Witch Doctor's mask. Look at the age in that. Look at that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Do you know where that's from? I How don't. It um, I guess it's Africa, but I may be completely wrong. Yeah, I thought it's more Indian. Is it? Yeah, yeah I think so, with the cobras on it. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll just go and have a look in there. Yeah, do. I think that was the flag that they flew when it was a military hospital. This was the thing I was going to have a look at. Do you yeah. want to get rid of that or you want to keep it? No, happy for it to have a new home. So that's the First World War yeah. hospital flag. Yeah. I thought it was a George Cross flag.